Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in the room, everybody. Is there anybody who's still full? Like, for all the American audience watching this, like, you're still full, you're still binging on those Thanksgiving leftovers. I have a word for you. I missed y'all. I miss y'all. I'm not used to not seeing my family and hearing from you on a Thursday night. I pray that you had an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving, even if you were by yourself. I pray that you found something to be thankful for. We don't need November to cause us to give thanks. We are constantly in a mood of thanksgiving. I'm excited because this word on the night, well, let me give this disclaimer. This, this word on tonight is for grown folk. <laughs> like, if you are content with being petty and content with being carnal, this, this message may not be for you. But for anybody watching this message where you're like, you know what, I want to mature. I want to have self-government over my emotions, over my perspective. I want to surrender my will for his will. I want the spirit of God to have his way more than I want to just have my way than this message is for you. This word on tonight is going to summon maturity. It's going to summon maturity because Jesus informs us in John chapter 13, verse 35. He says, listen, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. By this, all men will know that you are my representatives in the earth realm. By this, all men will know that you are my spokesman. By this, all men will know that you are my billboard, not by how well you preach, not by how good you can sing, not by how many followers you have, not by how big your platform is, not by how far your reach is, but how you can love one another. The ID, the identification card for the believer is how we are able to love one another. And the attribute that I think we often forget and is often omitted from the conversation when we are talking about love, that we forget often when it comes to talking about love, and I wanna give you scriptures to corroborate my claim. First, in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29, it says, whoever is, what's that word? Patient. Whoever is patient has great understanding. But one who is quick-tempered displays folly. This means one who is easily agitated displays foolishness. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, With humility and gentleness, with, there's that word, patience, bearing with one another in love. So we see patience we see love love and patience patience and love give you more bible colossians chapter 3 verse 12 it says put on then as god's chosen ones holy and beloved compassionate hearts kindness humility meekness and there's that word again patience <laughs> And the scripture that most of us have heard before, depending on where you are in your faith journey, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, it says, love is, y'all talk to me, patient. Love is patient and kind. And love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. I would like to speak around this thought from this subject for just a few moments on this beautiful Sunday night. Love is patient. Father, we thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you, God, for just your patience that you have had with us. And we're asking in this moment, would you help us produce the fruit of the spirits, the fruit of the spirit that goes by the name of patience. Help us grow in patience and anoint me as your oracle, as your PA system. All the study means absolutely nothing if you are magnified and glorified. 
We pray that you do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody who agrees with that prayer, would you drop in the room, amen, amen. Love is patient. Patience is love. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples by how you love one another. In other words, all men will know that you are a Christ follower by how patient you are. Oh, you scalp, you scalp. How patient you are. Your patience ability is a reflection on how well you follow Jesus. It's confession time because I feel it. I'm always hot even when it's cold. I feel it. I'm hot for y'all. Can I get everybody to put this in the room in all caps? We desperately need this, myself included. Can I get us to put this confession in the room? Father, increase my patience so that the world can experience your love through my patience. One more time. Father, increase my patience so that the world can experience your love through my patience. Love is patient. Patience is love. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and everybody watching me on tonight, there are a plethora of definitions and or descriptors that one could use in an attempt to articulate what love truly is. And per adventure, if I were to ask everybody, you're going to participate with me on tonight, even though it's virtual, let's make it personal. If I were to ask for everybody watching this message, I would like for you to put in the room, what is your definition of love? One person will put in the room, I'm glad you asked. To me, love is honesty, which is appropriate because when you truly love somebody, you will tell the truth. And then another person will probably drop down in the comment section. If you were to ask me what love is, I were to tell you that love is sacrificial. Love is sacrificial because love gives, which is also appropriate and biblical. For God so loved the world that he gave, which is appropriate because love does sacrifice and love does give. And then somebody else will say, hold up, wait a minute. Let me put my two cents in it. For me, love is unconditional. Because can you really say that you love me if you only will love me if I meet your conditions? That part, though. <laughs> love is unconditional, which is also appropriate. Definition after definition, descriptor after descriptor, love is selfless and love is honest and love is gentle and love is caring. But there is an attribute of love that is often left out when it comes to this conversation and that is love is patient. So the question on the floor, the quintessential question on the floor is, are you patient enough to love? Talk Holy Spirit. Are you patient enough to love and not just to love? Watch this. Are you patient enough for love? Because love is patient. I know you can serve. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I, I, I know that you can give. Yeah, I, I know that. Yeah, yeah, I know that you have a great following. I know that. Yeah, I, I, I know that you can volunteer. Yes, I, I know that. But ma'am, are you patient though? T-H-O, we're using Ebonics. Ma'am, are you patient though? Sir, are you patient though? Because patience reveals discovered value. Y'all, this was, this was in me all week. I did like a short video just giving you a small section of my sermon notes, but now I'm breaking it down. Love is patient, and patience reveals discovered value. You'll always have patience when you know the value of a thing. Did you hear me? Love is patient. And patience reveals discovered value. You will always have patience when you 
know the value of a thing. As crazy as it was, somebody on Tuesday, somebody on Monday of this past week was camped outside waiting for Black Friday. <laughs> Look, they were willing to rearrange their whole life, like their whole life. They were willing to rearrange their whole life to be outside of a store. Like they were willing to embrace the rain. I don't know where you are in the world, but it was cold and raining here in Houston. Like they were willing to embrace the rain. They got a tent for that. They were willing to embrace the cold. They got a blanket for that. They were willing to embrace uncomfortable circumstances because there was something inside of that store that they valued. Now, I'm not judging. If that was you, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm not judging. It's just for me personally. For me personally, I value being with my family more. Like, there is nothing more valuable in a store than for me to leave my wife and my two children to be camped outside of a store. I'm not judging. This is just me. This is not Bible. This is just me. I value my time. I, I value my health. Lord knows I'm not trying to get sick. I have to preach to y'all. Like I value, I value being in Christ-like character because for me, being in a line outside, being pushed and shoved, trampled on to get inside of a store on Black Friday is just a setup for my flesh to start tweaking. And I, I don't, I don't want nobody to see on the news a pastor was caught fighting today. That's not going to be me. So I'm not going to put myself even in that situation. But notice there was somebody and there were a group of people who viewed it as something is worth me being uncomfortable because I value what's inside this store. And watch this, y'all. They were willing to wait on it. They, they were willing to wait on it because patience reveals discovered value. When you really love a person, patience becomes easier when you understand their value. Like, I value this person. I value their presence. I, I value their conversation. I value their time. Uh-oh, here it is. You are never going to have to beg a man to do something that he values. You are never going to have to beg a man to make time for something he values. This is your confirmation. You'll never, I hit him three times. I called him. I left him a voicemail. Hey, he didn't return my phone call. Why he's not returning my voicemail. And then you have the audacity to look on social media to see if they updated their status. Um, Ma'am, he's supposed to be pursuing you. All right. A man will always make time for what he values because patience reveals discovered value. Therefore, to lose patience is to forget value. Hold on, wait, 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 don't, don't, don't turn me off. Remember our foundational text in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29, whoever is patient has great understanding. So when a man or a woman is patient, it's because they understand something. And sometimes that great understanding is the value of a thing. I'm patient with my wife because I understand the value that she adds to my life. I'm patient with my children because I understand the value that they add to my life. I'm patient with the process of God. Because first of all, he's God and he knows my end from the beginning. And then also I'm patient with God and I trust his process because I understand the value of being a man who is led by the spirit of God. Patience reveals discovered value. And I know we've been taught, we've been taught the love languages and we've been taught love banks and and love tanks and all of these innovative and creative ways to try to get a generation to know how to do life with someone from a kingdom perspective. 
We, we have content about praying for your future spouse and love her like Christ and watch out for counterfeits. But we often do not have as much content that teaches us how to increase our patience because an impatient heart cannot be a loving heart. Did y'all hear me? An impatient heart. Listen, love is patient. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. By the way, you are loving one another. By the way, you are patient with one another. An impatient heart cannot be a loving heart. In fact, the famine of preaching when it comes to this kingdom ethic is one reason why, not the only reason. There's toxicity, there's dysfunction. I've done so many sermons about that. I've done a sermon about that was toxic. I've done a sermon about that wasn't love. I'm not talking about that. But, but one reason why a lot of relationships go short-lived and a lot of our marriages are failing is because we have not been taught nor trained how to stick to it. Some, some stick to itness, if you will. The heart has not been trained how to endure. Stick with it. Ever since middle school, a lot of us have been breaking up with people since middle school. Break up, break up, break up, break up. What are you doing? You are classically conditioning your heart. When it gets hard, I'm out. When it gets difficult, I'm out. I'm not talking about to something that is unhealthy, toxic, and not God's will. Because you can have exactly who God wants for you to have, and it's still going to take work. You think finding the one is hard. I'm telling you on the night, being one is harder. You can have exactly who God wants for you to have, and it's still going to take ample amount of work. And our hearts have been classically conditioned. When it gets hard, we quit. When it gets hard, we quit. We don't know how to endure and somebody's like, yeah, but I'm just so frustrated. You don't understand with my boss, with my spouse. I I'm just so frustrated. You know what frustration is sometimes? Frustration is the roll call that lets you know patience is absent. <laughs> frustration is the roll call that lets you know patience is absent. What I want to do here. My desires, here. All right, you're present. Okay. All right. My timeline, here. Gotcha. All right. Patience. Patience. Is there anybody in the classroom with my heart called patience? Patience, many times, is frustration's roll call that lets you know patience is not here. This is so good, y'all. So good. And the distance... Listen, the distance between petition and manifestation is patience. Patience. It's not that God didn't hear you. It's not that your petitions have gone unheard. It's not that God is ignoring you or is this delayed. It's just that the distance between petition and manifestation is patience. Here's the problem, though. Want to help somebody? Here's the problem. We're so focused on the manifestation. Gosh, are y'all getting this? We're so focused on the manifestation that we don't see what God is doing right in the middle. I know what your petition is, and I know that you're waiting for the delivery of that petition to arrive, which is the manifestation, but I'm working on right in the middle. I'm working on healing you so when I send you what is yours, you will have the patience, the love, and the character to embrace it. I'm dealing with you right in the middle so that you can know my voice. You've been talking to too many people. You don't know the voice of the devil from the voice of me to the voice of you. I'm dealing with you in the middle, the distance between petition and manifestation is patience. The problem is we are so caught up on the manifestation because of our petition. In the middle, in the middle, I'm trying to teach you that your identity is found in me. 
Your identity is found in Christ and Christ alone. I heard your petition, but I'm trying to build in you patience right here in the middle. I, I heard what you asked for me to do in your life, but we weren't talking before you start asking for that. So whew, why would I send you the manifestation when we were barely talking before the petition? I like in the middle between the petition and the manifestation, you and I are developing intimacy. Why would I send you something that would take you away from talking to me? The distance between manifestation, the distance between petition and manifestation is patience. So the question is, are you patient enough for love? I'm not talking about lust, that's settling. And anything that settles always ends up at the bottom. That's a whole word. I'm not talking about lust. That's settling. Everything that settles ends up at the, bo at the bottom. The famine of educating people about this kingdom ethic is one of the reasons why I believe most of our relationships go short-lived is because we do not have hearts that have been trained on how to be patient. So what is patience? I'm going to give you two definitions that I believe is going to bless your life because it blessed mine. The first definition, patience is the acceptance. Can I get somebody to say acceptance? Patience is the acceptance that things happen in a different way than what you had in mind. My God, patience. Patience is the acceptance that things go in a different way than what I had in mind. I didn't have in mind this much traffic, but I'm patient. Why? Because I'm accepting I'm going to be late. So nothing I could do. We are not moving. I can call. I can send a text to whoever I'm meeting. There's nothing I could do about it. It's accepting the traffic. I did not, I did not think that my plane would be delayed, but I'm accepting it. And so accepting that is causing for me to woo in my mind because I'm accepting what I cannot control and I'm accepting what I did not have in mind. This is patience. Second, patience is the ability to survive when an individual is currently in the season of not yet. This is going to change somebody's life. Patience is when you can survive when somebody is in the season of not yet. My married people watching this, can you survive the many not yets of your spouse? And for all unmarried people watching this, I need for you to have the discernment so that you could discern when a not yet is a red flag versus when a not yet is an indicator of grace needs to be extended. Can you survive when an individual has many not yets? Have they gotten organized? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Has their credit score improved? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Have they stopped leaving the lid off the toothpaste? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Have they started making up their bed? Not yet. Not yet. Have they got over that struggle? Not yet. Not yet. Have they started being on time? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Can you survive the many not yet? And I know, I know like when... When God orchestrates me to form that sermon, I always think of the devil's advocate. Always. I, I think that is just effective preaching. When you could just think of what would an antagonist say to this sermon? And if I was an antagonist to this sermon, I would say, listen, bro, you, you setting people up for wasting their time. How patient can a brother be? Like, like, how patient can a sister be? I have seen nothing change. If I be honest with you, I have lost patience. I have lost patience. You up here talking about be patient and patient is the ability to survive the season of not yet and patience is accepting that things go in a different way than what you had in mind. I don't have no more patience. And I hear you. I hear you. I think it's just for many of us, we have limited patience now because we try to execute a love quality on a loveless person. All right, here it is for all the devil's advocates. I think the reason 
We don't have patience. And I did a whole series on discernment. If you have not checked it out, go binge it. I did a whole series on discernment because I believe one of the traps of the enemy is he tries to exhaust our heart's ability to love by getting us to fall in love with what hell sent. <sighs> this good, man. Like, I want, I want to get them to fall in love with what was never God's will. So now you have expounded all of this effort on what was never yours. You, you have invested all of this effort and energy on a counterfeit. You have invested all of this effort and time on what was going to leave anyway. So by the time God does send you something that is from him, all of your patience left with what wasn't from him. So now I, I don't, I don't even have the patience because I use all of that on someone who I wasn't even called for. Now, remember I told us, I told us this when Adam was alone, God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Adam was not a broken man. Adam was not dysfunctional. Okay. Adam was just limited. Adam was just limited. How? He couldn't multiply. I told us this. He was doing the best that he could, but without Eve, he could not multiply. He had seed. She has womb. I can't multiply seed with seed. I, I can't multiply womb with womb. So multiply means when you come along in my life, things start to increase. I was doing the best that I could with what God gave me where I am, but ever since you arrived, things started to multiply. Now watch it. It may not multiply how fast you want it to multiply. It may not multiply in the area you want it to multiply, but when you look overall over this particular relationship, you could see that they're growing and I'm growing with them. That's a sign. For all the people who are scared, like, I don't want to waste time and I don't want to waste time. We will be able to see that your presence is effective when things start to multiply in them and it starts to multiply in you. It's not that they weren't doing nothing until you arrived. It's that I was limited until they arrived. There was so much I could do without my wife. I was a man that God saw this brother needs help. <laughs> he needs a lot of help. So I'm going to give him one of my best helpers to help him and they can help each other fulfill their assignment in the earth that is for my glory. Because I don't send people just for romance. I send it to advance. Love is patient. Do you have the ability to survive the season of not yet? Listen, y'all, someone's transformation is directly connected to your ability to love them beyond their not yet. I need to say that one more time. Somebody's transformation is directly connected to your ability to love them beyond their not yet. As a spiritual leader, as a pastor, like for me to be able to love you beyond where you are is needed for you to embrace your spiritual evolution. Like the way it's not just lectures, it's also love. Like nobody cares that you can speak in tongues if you mean in English, whatever your native tongue is, you, you mean in Spanish. I need to be able to extend love. I need more people who will love me behind my back, love me behind my back. Even when you see my not yet, can you love me? And are you mature enough to cover that part of me? I'm, I'm not talking about endure sin, but I'm saying when somebody has a weakness, somebody has a moment, Judas had a bad heart. Peter had a bad day. When you see that somebody has a moment of not being where they are going to be, do you know how to cover it? Or are you like, I got so much tea on them 
Look at this, y'all. Let me give you Bible. Um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sin. Help somebody without telling everybody. Hmm. Help somebody without telling everybody. You don't run and tell somebody else's issues to other people because love covers not condone sin, but love covers a multitude of sin. This is a not yet moment. Don't just talk behind my back. Talk to my face. Is there anybody that's there? Like, I think the reason people talk behind your back, three reasons. I think it's either um, when they can't reach your level. Um, number two, when they don't have what you have. Or number three, they tried to copy you but can't. <laughs> like, don't just talk behind my back. Talk to me in my face. Maybe your breakthrough, just maybe your miracle is on the other side of your patience. I feel this, y'all. Maybe your miracle is on the other side of your patience. You don't need a different spouse, a different house, a different car, a different boss. Sometimes all you need is a different word. Patience. <laughs> different word. Not a different house, not a different bay, but a different word that I need to apply to my heart. Patience. Let me give you a Bible. Look at this. John chapter 21, verse 6. This is Jesus. He says, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Somebody put right side in the room. Right side. Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Look at this. Jesus says, cast your net to the other side. Please don't miss this, y'all. It was the same boat. It was the same net. It was the same time, the same weather conditions, the same lake but a different word, the other side. Oh, what is on the other side of your obedience? What is on the other side of this depression? What is on the other side of this fear? What is on the other side of this pain? Maybe what's on the other side is waiting for you, but it's tied to your patience. And I think, I think you know why patience is so hard, especially for millennials and Generation Z? I think, look, my phone, right? Let, let's say I want to listen to this song. It's a jam. Give me this song. I could dance like David. I think one of the hardest things for my generation is we can skip. We can fast forward. I can skip more. I can keep skipping. I can keep skipping. I think the ability to be able to skip, fast forward, and expedite shipping has messed up a generation. Because just because technology has advanced does not mean God's methods have changed. Here it is. God still uses wildernesses to purge us from Egypt. I know technology changed, but that's still a method that God uses. God still uses a famine for the prodigal. I know technology has changed, but God's methodology has not. I know that technology has changed, but God still uses big fish to get somebody to understand, I told you, you have a mission and an assignment in Nineveh. No, you may not literally be sitting in the belly of a big fish. Oh, but you sitting in the belly of something because when God doesn't have your attention, he knows how to disturb what does. God still uses crosses. I know technology has changed, but my method has not. I still use crosses to crucify your flesh with your passions and your desires so that the spirit can live in you. Maybe we have gotten so used to skipping and fast forwarding and next, and I want to get to this place faster. What's the fastest route? What toll road can I take? That that has bled over in the process of trusting God while we're in the middle of petition and manifestation. 
What is the lack of patience causing for you to miss out on? Hmm. What is the lack of patience causing for you to stay in longer than you have to? Because unlike some educational school systems, God won't pass you if you don't get this. There's something I need you to get. And I'm just convinced we have to get to a place in our life where we understand it's either embrace the new level or keep fighting the same devil. Patience, 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 patience. And God has been so patient with us. This trips me out, Carl. God has been so patient with us, so gracious. Like grace is our attorney. You know what that means? Like grace is our attorney that keeps getting our case dismissed. There's some stuff that you did. Y'all holy, let me put me on blast. There's some stuff I did that I'm so thankful that grace came in and got my case dismissed. You, you do understand there's some things in your life that were supposed to hit you but missed you, right? This is how we have the whole Passover festival. Because God was like, okay, Moses, um, I need y'all to have a Passover festival. Because there was a time in your life when the spirit of death was roaming through Egypt. But due to the blood on the doorpost on your life, when the death saw that, it went the other direction. There was a night when something should have hit you, passed over you. Can we pause real quick? Can we pause real quick and let's have a virtual praise break for thanking God for the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of our life so that some stuff that was supposed to hit us, it missed us. Passover, Passover. Now everybody's shouting, running man emoji, hand raised, go ahead and up and buck. Everybody's thanking God. But here's the crazy thing. How can we shout right now and thank God for grace that we have received, but then s s start stuttering when it's time to extend grace to somebody else? Hmm. <laughs> when it's time to extend grace, God was patient with us when we were in rebellion. Why can't we be patient with him as we're becoming? God was patient with us when we had and still have many not yets. Why can't we be patient with others as they still have many not yets? There is an upgraded version on the inside of you. And there is an upgraded version on the inside of me. And many times the way it comes out is by somebody who can love me enough to still disciple me and pray for me when I have my not yets. Not yets, not yets, not yets. Let me give you Bible, this passage of scripture, Matthew chapter 18, verse 23. Therefore, there was a king, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was bought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and that all he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. Notice it didn't say he took pity on, pity on him and gave him a payment plan. It took pity on him. And forgave all the debt. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. You owe this dude gold. This dude owes, okay. A hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke, oh boy. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me. The same thing he asked. And I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. The master called the servant in, you wicked servant. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to be patient. Shouldn't you have had mercy or shown patience? On a fellow servant, just as I had on you. 
In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Wow. So how? How do I develop patience? You've been telling me, we need patience, we need patience, we need patience. How do we develop patience? Point number one, accept things going different. It's the acceptance of things going different. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, it says, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. A lot of times the reason we keep breaking our own hearts is because we keep putting expectations on people. We get hurt by the expectations we keep putting on people. Everyone doesn't have your heart. Way to get patience, except that things can go different. Number two, how do we become patient? A lot of us are exhausted. A lot of us are exhausted. You're tired. I know when I'm tired, I'm not as patient. Rest. Participate in the Sabbath principle. Rest so that you can be a refueled version of yourself, not an exhausted version of yourself. How do we become patient? Many times we lack the patience that we need is because we have a grace deficiency. You don't even know how to give grace to you. Man. You don't even know how to give grace to you. It starts with being gracious to myself. Stop shaming yourself for what you've done but start applauding yourself with, for what the Holy Spirit is doing in and through your life. And last one, reframe your thinking. Reframe your thinking. What have you cropped out that's limiting your patience? What you're focused on? Like right now, I'm cropping this video. You're closer on me. Now, you don't even see me. A lot of this, a lot of us, you can't even see what God is doing because you keep on putting in the frame of your perspective what you want to focus on. And God is trying to get you to see the big picture. So, Father, would you help us in this area to produce the fruit of patience? That starts by understanding that things will go differently than what we expect. It also starts, God, by embracing those who are in a season of not yet. And surely... If you can be patient with me, with all of my not yets, I can be patient with others in the face of their not yets. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.